This is History Myths and Myth Conceptions. And today's myth is Nero fiddled while Rome burned. First things first, the musicianship of Nero. Indeed, Nero was a musician. He was probably a quite accomplished cithara player and took lessons from the best teachers of his time. Cithara is a type of lyre. The word guitar is based on the word cithara or its original Greek form, kithara. Yes, you can fiddle on a guitar, but people usually don't do that, unless you're Jimmy Page or something. So the real question is, did Nero play a cithara while Rome burned? That's very, very unlikely. This weird legend comes from the ancient authors, who were notoriously biased against Nero. There are three main sources on Nero, sensationalistic and not very reliable Suetonius, and his work The Twelfth Caesars, the history written by Cassius Dio, who lived almost two centuries after Nero, and Tacitus. Tacitus is the most problematic of the sources, because his annals are not only incomplete, but also quite probably a 15th century forgery commissioned by Poggio Bracciolini. For a number of reasons, this view is generally not accepted by most of the scholars, but there is a lot of evidence and serious books on the subject of authenticity of the works supposedly written by Tacitus. Nero, just like Caligula, for example, was almost certainly a subject of character assassination. The majority of accounts on him are quite negative, and obviously all of the Roman historians mostly speak bad things about him. Partly because they followed the established tradition of slandering the guy who annoyed too many people of senatorial class which resulted in his demise. We just can't separate truth from shameless fiction, given the incredible bias and scarcity of the sources. Nero was considered a bad emperor, and almost everything he did was interpreted in a negative light, to a point that some of the stories told by the ancient historians make almost no sense whatsoever. There was a massive fire in the year 64 and it is usually known as the Great Fire of Rome. Both Suetonius and Cassius Dio blame Nero on deliberately setting the city on fire, for absolutely no logical reasons at all. As Cassius Dio, writing almost two centuries after the event, brilliantly puts it, Nero set his heart on accomplishing what had doubtless always been his desire, namely to make an end of the whole city and realm during his lifetime. Yeah, ten years into Nero's reign, part of which was brilliant, a quite popular emperor decided that it's about time to burn the capital city to the ground and send people with the torches to set buildings on fire. Explanation. He was a self-destructive pyromaniac. And he also wanted to build himself a new big palace, Domus Aurea which kind of contradicts the idea of being self-destructive just for the sake of being self-destructive. And then, during the fire that raged for almost a week, now a quote from Suetonius. Viewing the conflagration from the Tower of Mycenae and exulting, as he said, in the beauty of the flames, he sent the whole of the sack of Ilium in his regular stage costume. That's nonsense and outright slandering, and this is the opinion of practically any modern historian. But this picture is so colorful that it became popularized by the works of fiction, including films. What was the immediate aftermath of the Great Fire of Rome? Well, here's another quote from Suetonius. He, Nero, devised a new style of building in the city ordering piazzas to be erected before all houses, both in the streets and detached, to give facilities from the terraces in case of fire for preventing it from spreading, and this he built at his own expense. So wait, literally five minutes ago, this guy told us that Nero decided to burn the city to the ground, and now he tells us that immediately after the fire, Nero was rebuilding the city, keeping in mind that the city planning must include measures for fire prevention. And he actually pays for it from his own pocket. 
And if we read Tacitus, who is probably not authentic, but just for reference, Tacitus mentions that during the fire Nero was actually in the city of Antium, not in Rome. And then he returned to provide relief. For example, as a relief to the homeless and fugitive populace, he opened the Campus Martius, the buildings of Agrippa, even his own gardens, and threw up a number of extemporized shelters to accommodate the helpless multitude. The necessities of life were brought up from Ostia and the neighboring municipalities, and the price of grain was lowered to three sesterces. Tacitus also mentioned that Nero blamed the fire on the Christians, but that's a different story. So, a quick recap. Nero is a subject of character assassination. The sources are very limited and very biased. He didn't set the Rome on fire, and no, he probably never ever fiddled on a cithara. Jimmy Page did. 